Today, we're going to be making low polygon. <laughs> this is low polygon. All right, guys. Today, we're going to be making low polygon spaceships and we're going to make them modular so you can assemble little ships together using different parts, wings, everything. So it should be a lot of fun. And best of all, do you know what? You're not even going to have to spend much time UV mapping them. It's super simple and I think you're going to love the trick. So let's get started. Let's have a look at this. Time to launch Blender 2.8 and start by deleting the light and the camera from your scene. Press tab to get into edit mode and change to face select. Press shift space and G to enable the manipulator. You can now click to select faces and move them along the manipulator axis. Try to make an object that's a bit of a body of a spaceship, so something flat and a little bit longer. Press Ctrl R to do a loop cut along the Y axis and split the object in half. Press Z and 4 to enable wireframe mode. Press B to box select, select half the object and press the delete key to delete the faces. Go to the modifiers tab and enable the mirror modifier. You can click Z and go back into solid mode again. Make sure to click the clipping checkbox so you don't get a slit down the center of the object. Press tab to go out of object mode and then you can duplicate the object by pressing shift D. You're going to be reusing this type of object over and over again to create new modules. Use Ctrl R to do some loop cuts both along the Y axis and around the X axis as well and shape it into a bit of a cockpit or a center body module. You can select faces and press the S key to scale them up and down. And also when you do your loop cuts you can use the mouse wheel to do multiple cuts and you can also slide them left and right along the axis. And we're already done with the first object now. It doesn't have to be any more difficult than that. So you can move it to the side and uh, let's move on to the next one. Press Shift D to duplicate your original object. And then you repeat the process over and over again, module by module. I'll create three body modules here and I'll speed up the process because it's basically the same every time. And now let's create some engines. Again, you repeat the same process by duplicating your original object. And this time you make it longer, narrower and rounder to represent the engine. Again, I'll speed up the process a little bit. And when you get to this point, you could select the end faces of the engine and then press the I key for inset. And since we've mirrored the object, we need to fix the center a little bit. So mark the two inner polygons and delete those. And then switch to vertex select and select these vertices. Click on the magnet icon and change the snapping mode to vertex. And now you can magically hold the control key and slide it along the manipulator's x-axis and then snap it to the vertex at the top or the bottom. That will automatically align it to the same x position as those vertices. Select the interfaces, hit E to extrude and move them along the y-axis and create the indentation. Let's do the same thing for the back of the engine, same type of indentation, so I'll speed it up a little bit again. Then I created some loop cuts around the engine and uh, made it a little bit bulkier in the center just to get a slightly rounded shape. First engine finished, so I pressed tab to get out of the uh, edit mode and then I used shift e again to duplicate it. I decided to use the same engine to create a slightly different version of it. In edit mode, you can press the number two at the top of your keyboard to go into edge select mode. Press alt and shift and click on an edge to loop select it. Then press the S key to scale it up or down, and then you can also move it using the manipulator axis. I press the 3 on the keyboard or select the face select at the top, and then uh, select multiple faces using the shift key and scale the rear part of the engine. Again, let's speed up because I was just fiddling a little bit with the shape and size, so you could do the same. Let's uh, move them to the side and get them out of the way for the next object. And next we'll be creating a wing and that one won't be mirrored, so I'll hit shift A on the keyboard and create a new cube. And then everything is pretty much the same. I use uh, face select to select different faces and I'll use S to scale them and I'll move them up and down and back and forth along the different axes to create the wing. Just like before, I use Ctrl R to do some loop cuts to add details and to shape the wing. First wing's already finished, simple as that. So I'll duplicate it and make another two wings with some different shapes to them. Body engines and wing modules are done and uh, let's make something else now, just some sort of a metal-y spine type of thing with some spikes on it. 
I use Ctrl R again to do a loop cut and I'll use the mouse wheel to roll it up and create quite a few cuts this time. I'll press escape to center them. And then I switch to face select and I hold the shift key to select multiple faces and I use the E key to extrude them and S to scale them down. That one's already finished so tab to get out of edit mode and then just move it to the side. Finally I'll make one last module and it's going to be a bit of a spike one, could be used as a weapon or something like that or a nose cone or whatever you want. And I'll just speed this one up too as it uses exactly the same method as before. For the purpose of this tutorial this should be well enough modules to get started but you could just keep going and going and create as many modules as you can imagine. Just on my way to work now but I'm going to grab some pictures on my way in for the textures. <laughs> Let's start with a kitchen drawer. <laughs> Cheap coffee, I know. Okay, I'm in the car. I'm gonna grab some pictures here as well. Oh my god, this is boring. All right, I'm coming up on some lorries now. They, I think the texture-wise, they should be quite good. So let's grab a picture of that as well. just spent 40 minutes in the car and the downside with drinking black coffee is that I didn't drink any of it. I guess you could say maybe it's because it was instant coffee so it's not really that good to begin with but uh, it is a bit too hot and uh, maybe I should have milk in it. Enough, let's go. Here's a bit of a life hack. Sticky tape, parking ticket. Won't move now. Okay, I had to head home a bit earlier than planned. The uh, My daughter's got chicken pox, so I, I have to go home and uh, pick the kids up. But I'm still gonna see if I can snap some pictures when I get a chance. Okay, welcome to the attic. I don't know why I'm whispering. There's no one here. Could be Wi Fi, could be bugs. I don't know. Never mind. Um, just gonna check if there's anything else here that I can use to take some pictures for my textures. Perfect. Stormtrooper. This position. I think I saw Darth Vader here too. Let's grab some of him. Okay, so this is gonna be a weird one. Uh, let's get some of the kitchen stuff, all right? There wasn't a whole lot in the attic to shoot, but uh, let's do one final thing, and that's my old MIDI keyboard that I never used, because it was rubbish. It just didn't work. Okay, that's it for now. I'm not gonna bump my head this time, I always do. Let's go around, stealth-wise. Ooh, remote-controlled car. In the evening I sat down at my computer again and I imported the pictures from my phone. I brought them all into Photoshop and then I cropped out square sections of the photos where it looked a little bit more interesting. You're probably wondering what the heck is going on with these textures, uh, what do they have to do with uh, spaceships? But the funny thing is that it doesn't really matter what the textures are, they'll wrap around the modules and many of the modules are symmetrical so they'll create interesting shapes and patterns and just to prove that point I took some pictures of some forks and knives and some plastic utensils and finally I exported the textures as square 1024 by 1024 images then switch back to blender and go to the shading tab press shift a texture and select image texture Click on open and browse to the textures that you've saved and import one of the textures. Then click and drag to connect color to base color. All the objects that you use the base object to duplicate have inherited the texture. As you can see, the wings did not. Then switch to the UV editing tab and then we need to enable the textures to show. And if you can't see that at the top right, you can modify the viewports a little bit so you can see it. Click on the shading drop down and change color to texture. And here comes the magic UV editing part. I go into object edit mode by using tab and select all the faces. You do that by clicking A on your keyboard and then you go up to UV 
and select Smart UV Project. You can just leave the default settings and then click OK. And on the left side, use A to select all the UV islands and then press S to scale them up. Make sure that they're a lot bigger than the image itself so the texture repeats. For the wings, just go back to the shading tab and assign them the same material that you created before. And now I start to assemble the spaceship here within Blender. You can use the N key to bring up the transform information and here I type in the coordinates to bring the module to the center. Make frequent use of Shift D to duplicate the modules. Press R to rotate and then you can press X or Y or Z to force the rotations around that particular axis. So here I press X to rotate the modules around the X axis. Then just grab some random modules, bring them in, use the different techniques of uh, typing in the transform positions using S to scale, R to rotate and position the objects to make up the shape of a spaceship. And then you'll come to a point where you start wanting to widen the ship. Make sure you're in object mode and apply the mirror modifier. And then you go back into edit mode, select all the faces and move them along the x-axis. Then you re-enable a mirror modifier. This way the objects will be symmetrical on both sides of the ship. You can rotate and move them around as you need. Some modules like the wings and engines I quite commonly put on the side to make a symmetrical look. So keep in mind that these ships are designed to be viewed maybe in a smaller scale than for top-down shooters or maybe isometric type of games where you keep the ships a little bit smaller, maybe RTS games as well. There won't be enough detail to zoom in real close or anything like that, so you should probably put more efforts into your UV mapping and texturing for anything that you need to look at closer. Here's what the remote control car texture looks like. And here is the wheel of my car. I'll keep using the remote control car texture for now and then I'm going to make a duplicate of the entire ship and then make another model by rearranging the objects a little bit. And let's speed things up a little bit again. I rename all the objects and give them meaningful names. And then I also move them to the center of the scene because uh, when I export these as FBX files, when they're centered in the scene, it makes it a lot easier to use them as they will rotate around their own axis. In a game engine, it's easier to have a left and a right version for non-symmetrical objects. So for the wings, I press Shift D to duplicate the object. I press S for scale, X for X axis, and then I type in minus one to flip the wing. Remember that when you flip an object like this, all the normals will be inverted. You need to select all the faces and hit Alt N on your keyboard to flip the normals. You can go to the overlays dropdown and select the little icon to display the normals to help you see that the normals are facing the right direction with the little lines that are pointing outwards from the face. Now it's time to bring all the objects into Unity. So go to File, Export, FBX. I click the experimental apply transform checkbox to get the rotation correct in Unity. This time I export everything as a single scene, but you could export object by object to get a clean FBX file for each module. Here I've imported the objects into Unity and I begin to assemble spaceships. 
I drag out module by module and I use Control D to duplicate objects within Unity. So it's a slightly different shortcut compared to Blender. And I drag out the objects and I place them next to each other. The wings are a little bit more tricky since I can't use the mirror modifier. So I have to manually rotate wings and place them appropriately. Same thing for anything else that is symmetrical. I ramp up the speed in this video so you can just see the process of creating spaceships. In total I created 12 of them and it took me one and a half hours to assemble all 12 ships within Unity including adding the engines that you'll see towards the end. Finally, I also add some particle systems to represent the flames of the engines. I use uh, the default texture for the particle systems in Unity and I color them in slightly different colors and I also fade them a little bit over time in color, alpha value and also in the size. And if you want me to make a video of this, uh, give me a comment down below and I'll add a tutorial about the flames as well. Okay, and we're done. Here are the 12 spaceships and they're rotating as if they were in a top-down shooter game. Remember the car wheel texture? Here's that texture wrapped around the modules and I used the same texture for the diffuse map and also a grayscale version for the normal map. And now let's just finish off with uh, running through some of the textures. Here's the dashboard in my car. And here's the kitchen drawer with the knives and forks and plastic utensils. Another view of the car dashboard. And here's the wheel rim of my car as well. Here's the stormtrooper, the face of the stormtrooper. And following that is Darth Vader. You can see some of the green and red buttons on the sides. Then we have the remote controlled car again. You can see that green texture coming through in this one. And then here's the kitchen stuff that I found up in the attic as well, a nice red color. Followed by the lorry on the road as well on my way to work. And also the torso of the stormtrooper follows here as well, as you can see. And then this is the MIDI keyboard. And yet another view of the dashboard as well. And to finish off, here's the final view of uh, the remote controlled car again. And we're finished, we've reached the end. Okay, so I've even changed clothes. That's how long it took. Uh, it wasn't because actually the making the spaceships themselves and the modules and even taking the photos didn't take that long uh, and assembling them in Unity once I imported them there. Like I said, it took about one hour and a half, but putting together the video, I wanted to add the keyboard shortcuts. I also wanted to mention about the process, uh, clip it together. Uh, so it made some sense. Uh, and uh, so it took some time, but. It's up now and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned some things. It was fun to share it with you. So I hope you can just uh, assemble your own little modules now and snap some photos and the symmetry should make it look great when you put them together. So just go ahead and make your own spaceships now. Uh, go for it. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe as well if you wanna see some more stuff. I hope to create more tutorials and put some stuff in the comments if you want and me to go through anything specific. Maybe it was something in this video that you want to find out more about or anything else that I do about my assets or my game development or sound effects or music or whatever. So again, just write it in the comments, hit the thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>